Hello, today I'm going to be woman-splaining feminism. Today I'm talking about trigger warnings. So I see a lot of misunderstandings online, or at least what I perceive as misunderstandings, of what phrases like trigger warning actually mean. In my experience, this has been a measure implemented in very specific corners of the internet for the sake of not upsetting people who've experienced some kind of trauma. For people who've been abused, for example, they can end up developing a condition like PTSD. For a soldier who's returned from war, people are aware of things things like fireworks triggering an anxiety attack. It's similar for rape victims and mentions of rape or depictions of it in the media can trigger an overwhelming response of anxiety. This isn't just specific to PTSD or victims of trauma since there are also conditions which involve suicidal ideation or things involving eating disorders which can have their triggers also. Of course triggers are things that will need to uh, be worked around with psychologists for most people. Though some people will never feel comfortable with uh, content discussing trauma that they've experienced and some people will never have access to a psychologist due to poverty or other reasons. The idea that of a trigger warning is simply to warn viewers who may be upset by content. It's used no differently to viewer discretion warnings on the television. The only difference is that it's a lot more specific what the trigger will potentially be. Triggers refer specifically to feelings associated with trauma, sometimes feelings that are triggered in relation to mental illness. I used to see trigger warning food on posts and wonder why that was there. As it turns out, that is there so people with eating disorders who are triggered by images of food can avoid content that upsets them. This is not to suggest that everyone online absolutely must use a trigger warning or is a bad person, but it's a considerate action to take if you know that somebody has a mental illness or has experienced trauma and they're on your friends list on Facebook, for example, and it's just being considerate where possible. Um, as someone with a basic understanding of human psychology, I do know that some triggers people have will be incredibly hard to account for, and to the point it would, it would likely be too difficult for others to accommodate for these needs. For example, if I were beaten as a child repeatedly while brushing my teeth, it is it's possible that toothpaste could trigger an anxiety attack in relation to that abuse. Of course, that is a very specific trigger as an example, so it's unlikely that others will be able to accommodate for that without knowing the situation. However, triggers that can be accounted for can be things like the subject of rape in general or abuse as well, and for these ones, that's where you'll often see trigger warnings. I personally am of the opinion that with regards to things like eating disorders, abuse, mental conditions, and anything that can be a trigger for people, if we we can take small measures to reduce the pain experienced by people in these groups. It's a kind and considerate thing to do. That said, unless you're going out of your way to trigger these thoughts in, about abuse in abuse victims to be malicious, the lack of trigger warnings alone isn't enough to make you a terrible person. In short, trigger warnings are a very simple way to let people know uh, that you support them and show solidarity with people experiencing a kind of trauma or mental illness, generally speaking. It's a small gesture that can really make a difference to the people who it means the most to. It's nothing to be upset about and it's really rather confusing why this becomes so hotly debated but I hope that this has shed some light on it for at least some of you. Have a really nice day!